in this example we've got um, a lot of different results here all for test scores and they're all in a random order and there is a, a much better way of presenting all of this using what's called a stem and leaf diagram so in the way that you'd imagine you know, stem and leaf is just, you've got the stem here and, and the leaves coming out like this um, there are ways to present data like this and this, the, what I'm going to talk through now is a simple version of this. So what we're going to write are the the tens column and the units column. So if I do it like that, the tens column starts at zero tens and what's the highest score here? I can see a 48. I can't see any 50s anywhere, so that means that I'm going to go all the way up to 40. So that's the tens column. Now, um, if I wanted to then write the rest of the numbers down, I could do them in a, just a random order, and that's probably the, the, the thing to do first. So I could just cross them off the list, 17 would go here. Now the units for 17 was just, is just 7. Uh, the next one, 23, 23, I put a 3 there, 46, you can see what I'm doing here, 46. But what happens then if I wanted to, let's do another 17, let's do that one next. Then I would write a 7 here. So these two 7s represent in fact two 17s. So you can see that actually the amount of data that I'm writing is the same, but the uh, the number of figures I'm writing here is smaller than, than in the list because I'm writing, only writing the 1 from the 17 once and then the units, however many units I have. So I could go ahead and do all of these all in one go and then afterwards I could then very easily order them. So if I had here um, in my units I've got two 19s and a 12. So there's a 19 there, a 19 and a 12. Where did that go? There it was. Um, and they are all of the tens, all of the teens. So then if I wanted to um, draw a, a, draw this again, a second version of it, then I could easily then write these in order. So then my second graph, my neater graph, would have the same tens, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, but then in my, uh, for my tens, it would be, Two seven seven nine nine, which is much easier to order. So I would do a working one and then a neat one to get into the habit of doing this stem and leaf diagram. Okay, um, I think we've got enough time to quickly have a look at example four. So a student records the temperature in a greenhouse every four hours during one day. The list is, uh, the, the results are listed below. Here we go. Right, so we've got different times here. Again, it's a 24 hour clock, goes all the way up to uh, midnight, starts at midnight as well. And the temperature seems to rise and then fall. It's asking to draw a line graph and use it to estimate the temperature at 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock wasn't given, it's going to be halfway between these two. Um, we could imagine it would be halfway between these as well. But it says use it. To estimate, so we must use the line graph rather than just um, interpolating here, and it's asking the same with the with the fourteen. So the sort of thing we're going to be doing uh, neatly, this would be drawn with a ruler. Um, we would draw the the temperature up the side with uh, zero, zero degree centigrade, and then the time across this axis here. In uh, well, the units are it's in hours really, so I should do hours. Um, now, for knowing how to how to draw this, I, I, I would look at the 24 and say, right, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, in fact, before even drawing this, I would have worked out that I needed 6 here and then drawn this maybe 12 or 18 or some multiple of 6 units across because that then helps then draw the increments in the right place. Now, just by guessing here, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I haven't got enough. So, um, if I'd have just drawn this without measuring it, yeah, I've messed up here. That should be a little longer, and there should be another increment here. So, it's best to to always get an idea about how long to do them before drawing it. So this was at uh, four hours, 
8 hours, 12 and so on. And then uh, we would do the same with the temperature. So before uh, doing my increments, I'm going to look here, at, see the maximum is 25. So that, that could be 25 here. And let's say that every one of these would be, I don't know, uh, two centimeters to each five, for example. So that'd be five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Oops, I'm running out of space there. I shouldn't really do it on this side. I'll just put it in there. It's not very good. Um, right, so now the next thing is to, to, to plot the coordinates. So, in fact, I didn't, didn't label this. I should have labeled that at zero as well. And the same with the temperature. Um, right, so we've got uh, at zero, we've got six degrees. And then four o'clock is five degrees. Um, eight o'clock is nine degrees. And it looks something like this. This isn't very good, but it's uh, it's it should have the same right sort of shape. Okay. Now, when drawing these uh, up, you can draw them with straight lines here, although it's not actually in real life going to be in straight lines. It's more likely to be a curved line. So, um, when you're drawing a line graph it's best to, to, to just draw these together with straight lines with a ruler um, although it's not technically accurate doing it this way um, and then using it to estimate the temperature at 10 o'clock you would draw 10 here draw a dotted line with a ruler up to this point and then uh, draw a dotted line across here and you'll see that it's about 16 from this poorly drawn graph um, your graph should look a bit more like this um, so we've got much more accurate and you can see from my graph I said it was about 16 using this graph it's actually at 15 degrees um, so it's yeah it is, it is always more accurate to but, but better to draw it with a more accurate graph 